in November 2021, the German traffic light government wrote one single sentence in its coalition agreement. We are introducing the controlled dispensing of cannabis to adults for recreational consumption in licensed stores. This sentence turned the whole medical cannabis industry in Germany upside down because everyone was looking for a big, big adult use market. Now it's one and a half year later and we have the second cornerstone paper in Germany, which is not going for, aiming to legalize the whole value chain, but which is aiming to set up a regulated framework for cannabis clubs with up to 500 members and in a second law to set up pilot projects where regions can opt in. So that's the current status. Dirk and Julian, how happy are you with the work of our health minister, Karl Lauterbach, who is in charge of the policy progress? Dirk, maybe you want to go ahead. Okay. Um, as an industry, of course, we have hope for more. Um, but we also always knew that this is not a sprint. This is a marathon, and we're just at the beginning. Um, it sounded like a miracle that we can solve all the European, the international legal issues. Um, so we are not surprised about the development. Um, but, and that's, I think, the, the core thing here, um, it's a definite step in the right direction. You know, we're decriminalizing cannabis. That's the understanding of the German government that the prohibition policy of the last decades have, has failed. Um, and it's now about us, the industry, to really work with the government to find a way how we can also use these two pillars to really have an impact on the illicit market and really show that the cannabis industry can supply high quality product, make a safe consumption for consumers um, and work together. But I think it's also important that any decision that also is translated into a law is a good decision for the industry. I think before we had just assumptions and, you know, very different opinions that somehow became also leaks in some time. Anything that is getting into a law, something that we can act on as an industry together is crucial. And one thing that is overseen that in that first pillar is um, which, what's included is reclassification as a non-narcotic. And that helps the medical industry particularly because it has still been a big barrier um, for patient access, for doctor access. And I think that's about to change. So I think the, the DNA of a, of a state health minister is all over this. It's very important when you look at Germany, who's driving cannabis legalization. It's coming from a state health ministry so we will always have healthcare in the back of their mind. So we already discussed the two pillars. First, cannabis clubs. We're expecting the law to be public very soon because it's, from a regulative point of view, way easier to regulate the cannabis clubs which produce cannabis for their own consumption of members, which is kind of a decriminalization. And then we have the second, second pillar, the pilot project where you also need to set up a study design and where you also need to involve, at least that's what said the Bundesrat and um, also you need to go to the EU Commission to notify everything. That's what's uh, publicly said. Which pillar of the two do you actually prefer from an industry point of view? Um, also considering that it, we might have the first one very soon and the second pillar, the law, it is expected to be published in summer, but let's wait when we actually see the first pilot project running. Which one do you prefer from an industry point of view? I think it's a combination of both. First of all, um, if we don't take the first pillar, which is for me mainly focused on decriminalization, really on, on making the point that the use of cannabis as an adult is legal. Um, I think that's, that's a prerequisite to, to move on. Um, this framework for the first pillar will, will not be very easy. I think it's a, it's a very detailed one. I think it's not that hard to really get to the point where we decriminalize and allow personal growth of three plants as it's planned, but the whole cannabis club structure will be complicated. So 
but as it's uh, as a described as a uh, yeah non profitable uh, project, um, there is up to now no no big role for the industry there except of supporting. So we will see what that will be because we will see very soon the draft bill and then it goes to the parliament one day and there will be a lot of discussion and we will have to see you know how that develops but the second pillar of course is, is a huge opportunity um mainly and that's i think the main message to the german government because that will show really show an impact we can demonstrate an impact and it's very very important that we move ahead very quickly with that otherwise we probably give the illicit market time to flourish, to make a lot of money over the next couple of months, probably years, until we have the uh, pilot project. So, but there is a good chance that, that we can build something which really shows the impact, and then hopefully, uh, if we do a good job in five years, we, we are at a point where we really have a European idea of how uh, legalized cannabis markets would look like. I think, again, we're pretty pragmatic, so anything that's written into law is what we prefer. Uh, so I think it's a good first step. Um, and again, I think it's crucial to, to see um, reclassification come in there because that has held back everything. I mean, it has also held back digital prescription for cannabis, which is still paper-based in Germany. So if you're a patient in Germany, there's a whole logistical process involved. And we're obviously um, you know, interested in looking forward to the, to the second pillar, which again, uh, health state minister DNA all over it. So it's a scientific pilot project. I think it will be interesting because we've also <clears throat> already at this point um, provided some data to the government. I think they will expand on that. Um, but again, I think it's still relatively far out. Um, I'm hoping that Dirk is right, that summer is the, the right projection there. But I think we've learned in the past that it can also take longer. Um, and I think also to put it into play, the perspective on that is a little bit more far out, hopefully 2024, but it may even be later than that. So let's focus on what's happening right now. In a pre-discussion uh, before this session, I told someone in Germany, we say, lieber, die, lieber den Spatz in der Hand als die Taube auf dem Dach. Uh, I think in English it's called uh, better one bird in a hand than two birds somewhere else. Um, I don't know if it was 100% correct. But that's what we currently see in Germany, that we have less risk to that the European Court of Justice at the end says everything we have done so far um, is like cancelled. We have something which most likely will um, go get things rolling. So that's the good news. Um, however, if we look at the cannabis club structure, uh, Justus Haukap, he estimates that at least we will only have a demand of 400 tons in Germany. And the cannabis clubs, they have maximum of 500 members and each member, correct me if I'm wrong, is allowed to produce, or not to produce, but to get 50 grams of cannabis out of the club. As said, only uh, production for members. And this is really not a social club model, but more non-profit non yeah, non association for production. So in total, it would be 25 kilograms per month. And then we have the 400 tons of demand. So do you think the clubs, which are non-profit associations, will somehow have an effect on the illicit market? We should not forget that this is always the overall aim in Germany, uh, to, to fight back the illicit market. It's, it, it's all a bit crystal ball reading, to be honest. You know, um, if, we, if we look at the, the cannabis club structure as it's supposed to today, but we don't know the bill right now, um, it's, it, it will be complicated, you know, we're, we're talking about a production max of 300 kilos uh, per year, but just think about 300 kilos per year for somebody who never did that before in that amount, it's not that easy either. So I, from my perspective, we will see a couple of clubs who, where enthusiasts will just go get together and grow great cannabis for themselves. And we will probably see semi... Uh, commercial productions, um, which, which will have 500 um, people or, or less, you know. But it's, it, it's definitely not, not, not the structure to replace the illicit market. It's, uh, uh, and it will all depend on how the, the, the legal framework is designed around that, how, how strict is it. And I can remember Moritz and I had, had a discussion a couple of months ago about that, and we came up with, you know, the devil's in the detail. You know, it's a, it, it, we will see, you know, is it, is it more focused on the 
the idea of Malta dealing with cannabis clubs, or is it more the Spanish idea? Uh, and, and all the risk associated to that. So it won't be a simple task there. And, you know, that's, that, that's the goal for us as an industry to say, you know, the industry is there. We have the capabilities. We have the know-how. Um, we probably don't make a lot of money out of it, but we're here to help. You know, we can support you as the cannabis clubs to, to get that done. Julian, how can you help cannabis clubs? Yeah, I think first of all, the, the challenge with cannabis clubs is first of all, growing to that quality and then organizing a club itself. I mean, I'm not part of a guardian club myself, so if it, what I hear is it's a lot of paperwork involved. And I think if you zoom out a little bit to kind of rephrase that question, maybe what's, you know, how do you solve illicit market issues? I think it has always been about easy access to cannabis and reliable access to high quality cannabis. And it has been about cost. And that's where I think where Germany is heading, that's also what we took away from the GBH decision, um, that you know, if you can solve both, so if you have a medical market, but you dramatically, and that's what's about to happen, lower the entry barriers. So where in the past we couldn't treat people with, let's say, just mild sleeping disorder, etc. But we can, we will be in the future, and it will be, you know, in, in, in electronic access, so you can become a cannabis patient on Sunday night at 2 a.m. I think those two pillars, especially in German health system, which is different from the U.S. and different from Canada, I think will help to, to eradicate the illicit market to some extent and it will also drive costs down dramatically. And then I think it's kind of, you know, pick your choice um, if you want to be in a guardian club and it works well for you. I mean, that's great. Perfect. Um, but what we've seen also from patients um, in Germany um, is that they obviously, um, you know, they, they appreciate having a doctor available to them uh, online all the time um, because it helps get better results. I think if you look at cannabis, if you have great experience at like probably this audience, yes, you may know what you're doing, but the majority of people and the, the mass market in Germany has, and that the growth potential also, has no access to cannabis right now, but they're considering it in the future and they need a good guidance along the way. I'm also very, very curious how the law will look like. We will have it any day publicly available. Most likely it was said that uh, it is, it exists already for the first pillar that always uh, keep in mind for the first pillar for the cannabis clubs. The law should be there and should be currently discussed within the ministries. On the one hand, Karl Lauterbach always said that his overall goals are use protection and quality of products. So he somehow needs to have strict regulation to solve this in the clubs. On the other hand, if we look at Malta, we see that over-regulating uh, these kind of clubs, which are non-profit, or most likely non-profitable and most likely not so professional in organizations, will lead to the fact that no production is happening there and no effect on the illicit market. So I'm super curious how this law uh, will look like. Regardless of that, before we have a closer look at the second pillar, uh, Julian, you mentioned something uh, reclassification as non-narcotic. This is also highly debated within different within different political um, organization. Uh, what do you hope will how the medical you you may already talked about it how the medical market will benefit from a reclassification as non-narcotic if it happens. I mean, so it's already published on the website of the state health ministries, who are pretty pretty confident in their decision making and also think what's the industry seeing. That has been a big blocker if you look at patient access, patient growth and also for doctors in the past um, because paper-based, also legally speaking, high regulative borders I think also for, you know, for importing I think Dirk has also has um, some feedback from the industry there. Um, it's still very complicated and I think it's great that Germany as a country as a consequence of this whole process is speaking more openly about cannabis and that cannabis is not as risky uh, as we may have thought in the past and also the data that we're doing with university collaborations is pro showing that on a side effect level cannabis and I think that translates also in an easier access common side effects are dryness of the mouth and maybe you know increased sleep which compared to opioids is just a completely different ballgame. So what it will enable us um, is really a full digital um, service for patients. Um, so electronic prescriptions, um, onboarding, um, you know, at, at any point of time, basically, and just less hassle for doctors and less um, legal aspects and, board and entry barriers to worry about. Because also for, I think that's, it's important to look at the very severe cases where cannabis works, but it's crucial to see that 
for the majority of people in Germany who have medical conditions, cannabis could be an option. And we're talking sleeping disorders, we're talking anxiety, um, you know, inflammatory diseases, et cetera. It doesn't always have to be this last, um, last resort case. It needs to be easier access for everybody and that will help us all as an industry. So we might have a very different coexistence of medical and adult use cannabis in Germany compared, for example, to Canada, where adult use market, legal adult use market, slightly led to a declining medical market. Our health system is completely different. So um, let's see what's going to happen. We will know more very soon and uh, the future will tell. Just to very briefly quick on, sorry, we know that from the US that about 40% of people in recreational stores actually treat themselves medically. So I think Germany is very different from a healthcare system and that's about to play out. Looking at the second pillar, this is a bit more vague, everything, than the first pillar because, as said, the law will come in the summer. We see that in the Netherlands, we are waiting for a pilot project to start on a large scale. There are 10 regions with more than 70 coffee shops involved who will legally distribute cannabis, legally produced cannabis, the whole value chain, chain in this region. So very easy access in seven out of these 10 uh, regions. Can, every consumer should could just go to these coffee shops and buy this legally produced cannabis. While in, the, while in Swiss, we have a pilot project with 350 something uh, participants. So where is like, wh where should we go? Swiss or the Netherlands? Well, the Netherlands, they have started five years and still not like have sold a single gram. We hope that it's going to happen in autumn. But anyway, uh, in theory, it might be a large scale model. What would you prefer? Uh, it's, it's a simple answer. You know, the, the more, the bigger um, the, 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 the pilot is, the better. You know, everybody who gets off the illicit market to a legal market gets quality product. That's a win. Um, is that an easy task? Well, I believe, you know, 15 out of 16 federal states will be happy to participate. I'm, I'm pretty sure. Um, one might be a bit pro problematic, but um, that's a different story. But nevertheless, you know, we have some prerequisites we, we see there. You know, we have to produce in Germany. That's, that's stated clearly. So that's the same issue like in, 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 in Netherlands. You know, you have to ramp up production and even for a pilot project, that's not a simple task and finding money to invest right now is not that easy. On the other hand, you know, we have the opportunity that we have an existing system over um, the medical system right now, which proves that we are able to provide high quality product on a, uh, on a high level basis. So we can utilize this experience and I'm pretty sure that a small scale project like in Switzerland won't be able to prove the point that we really have an impact to um, the illicit market. So the most important thing right now is to start now with the scientific part. And we have a number of scientists got together in Germany, made a proposal to the German government and say, you know, let's start now. We need to baseline, we need to have the data, and then we have to roll it out. And it doesn't make sense to just have small scale projects because, you know, that's that's, to be honest, an investment program for the illicit market for the time being. As we also discussed in the past, it probably won't work out with just growing within Germany. So I think importance will be crucial. And that's why I think the law will change along the way and the discussions along the way. I prefer the, the, the approach that generates the most data. Uh, I think if you look at the last six years of medical cannabis in Germany, where there was basically one big trial come out and the data was very inconclusive and I think also misinterpreted. Um, it's good to see it has a scientific seal on there, which at the same time also means a lot of people will be involved. Um, and I think we're looking forward to also supporting, but also seeing the outcome of a scientific approach that actually generates valid data that we can use for future decision making, because that hasn't happened in the past. I just had a podcast recording with two uh, scientists, uh, interdisciplinary team, they had a proposal for the government and said we should start gathering data right now because we want to compare what the effect of the pilot project is and if you don't have, they call it time zero, if you ho don't have this data for time zero, we have a problem later on because we can't have, we can't build a trend on the effect. 
And they also said, and that's quite interesting, that they would prefer differences within the regions to actually also say how and why details matter. Um, so it will be interesting how this framework will look like if it A, gives a lot of like standardization, but also enables a bit of comparison. And at the end, we also need to find data, and that's the overall target, to convince more EU member states to change policy. How optimistic are you that we will get this data and this data we gather in Germany will help to change EU policy in the long term and that we then will have the final result, a complete legal value chain? I will make it quick. I see Matt sitting there already showing us that we are... Very quick, very quick. <laughs> I, had the, so, I had the word time. Fir first of all, um, we don't start at, at, at nothing. You know, We have six years experience with medical cannabis. We worked now as an association and other stakeholders in Germany with the government for over a year on the details for a recreational market. So there's a lot of knowledge already there. There's already a lot of legal information there. So it's not that we're starting from scratch. Um, and I think, you know, there are so many countries who see that prohibition policies failed, that we need to start now doing that to really influence the EU. And I'm very, very optimistic that long term we find a solution where we find a framework for EU members to legalize cannabis while others will remain on their position to say, you know, that's not our cup of tea. We don't want to play with that. So that's a long term goal. Um, and as I said in the beginning, we're at the start of a marathon that, that will take a lot of time, but we're on our way to the goal. You know, it's it's just don't be over enthusiastic. It will take time. You have half a minute. Yep. Yeah, I'll do twenty seconds. Um, my proposal would be to get the industry involved, get the companies involved, and you know, bring practical expertise in, and just just only going from theory. Because I mean, there is data in Germany. We alone just you know, there's so much data accessible. But if you only go from a governmental perspective and ignore the people, who, the companies who had actually been generating the data, then it might, it's more likely to fail. So that would be my proposal, yeah. So let's focus on the good things. Be optimistic. A new era of cannabis has just begun. Thank you. Thank Lawrence. you. Thank you.